absolutely delicious. Woo! So I don't just feel like I've jumped on the RS with some low bars. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the new Triumph Speed Triple RR. Now I spent a fair bit of time with the RS version last year. Remember the RS version? It was new to the market last year. New 1200 engine, really lightweight, loads of power, sounded amazing. Well, this is the RS version. It's basically the same bike, but this has dropped down more of a sports bike riding position with like, a, what would you call it? A retro -y modern look, neo cath look, to, to coin a Honda phrase. Well, today we're gonna to be taking this bike out for a little bit of a spin. Massive, massive thank you to Destination Triumph for lending me this. This is their demo, links below. So I'm really interested in two things. How much has the electronic suspension affected the ride, comfort, and performance of the machine? And how comfortable are these new bars? And again, has that really affected the performance and the ride of the machine? So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea, Put your feet up and chop seat, roll the intro. Look at that. I must say, a lot of people have said we will do a bit of a walk around in a minute when we uh, when we stop again. But a lot of people have said they're not sure on the looks of this bike, you know, with its sort of retro stroke modern looks. It's a really interesting, bold statement, I think, from Triumph, the look of this bike. But the point I'm making is when you actually see it in the flesh, the details like the carbon and the, just the fit and finish of it is absolutely beautiful. And this paint finish also, this red metallic finish is lovely with the two-tone. I've got a lot of time for the looks of this machine. And this one's also got a little EvoTech tail tidy. And look at the back end with the tail tidy. Looks brilliant. But we will do a real detailed look around it with the other camera um, when we stop, but I can't wait to ride it. Let's jump on. Swinging your leg over, the first thing you notice is it's familiar. I um, mean, the seat feels exactly like the, the RS version. I've actually spent a fair amount of time riding the RS. I've even done a track day on the RS version of this bike. I'll put a link to the video at the top there. So I've, I've used it on the road, I've used it on track. So I know the RS quite well. One of the main criticisms people had about the RS was how sporty and stiff the Olin suspension was. For this R R version, they've got the, e the Olin's EC2 electronic suspension. So what I want to get from this video is how good is this suspension compared to the non-adjustable, you know, the, the non-electronically adjustable suspension on the RS and also the riding position, the ergos. And overall, how much does this bike feel like the RS version? Or does it feel like a whole completely different motorcycle? Those are the questions. Let's get going. It's got the same dash uh, as the RS version. We'll come on to all the electronics and the dash a bit later. But first of all, you know what we've got to do? Let's do a little bit of a noise check. <laughs> Sounds lovely, doesn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> it's got some go. It's got some go, this bike. It's the 1160cc engine out of the RS versions. 177 horsepower and 125 newton meters. So it's fair to say this bike has a big old dose of power. I mean, it's not topping the charts on the horsepower, you know. It's sub 200 horsepower, but I think what Triumph are trying to do with this is it's, a, you know, the, the ultimate road sports bike. So you don't need 200 horsepower. What you need is usable power. The power delivery sort of starts at 3000 and it pulls strong. Someone commented, I put a little picture up on Instagram that I had this bike and someone said, oh, test road, it, it had no torque, no low down power. What are you talking about? This triple motor is full of go. If you compare the response and the pickup on this to a 1000cc inline four, this has got 
a lot of punch. Not as much punch as a V4, like Toronto RSV4, but compared to a straight four, it's got loads of, loads and loads of pull. And uh, it's a really sweet motor. I'm getting in front of this guy already. <laughs> what are the ergos like with these new bar position? Well, it is quite sporty. I think the foot rests are up slightly compared to the RR. And that's no bad thing because when I was on the took the RS sorry on track, I actually touched the pegs down a few times on that bike. So slightly higher foot pegs wouldn't go amiss. It's not too extreme. You don't think, oh blimey, where's the pegs when you lift your legs up? It's at a reasonable height, but slightly higher than the RS version. The bars are obviously clip on so that you are down a little bit at the front. You know, it's definitely a bit of a sports bike tuck but I wouldn't say it's as extreme as a lot of sports bikes. I'd say it's a similar position to the S1000RR. I'd say it's a comfortable sports bike position. Not too extreme, much more comfortable than let's say Panigale, R1, you know, it's more S1000RR, GSXR. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Nationals. Oh, it's got a load of pull. Loads of pull from that motor. You know, that triple engine, you know, I've said it a million times, triples give you the, the best of a twin, that, that twin torque, and also the top end of a straight four. They're great blend, they're sort of in the middle between a straight four and a twin. And the induction roar they've tuned, tuned into that. I think it's the same as the RS. I think it sounds exactly the same as the RS, but it's a beautiful, sounding by you may not be getting much noise out of the exhaust you know with euro four euro five you can't do that but that induction roar sounds absolutely delicious power oh, oh this is a bumpy bit of road and i've got this in sport mode at the moment and i'm feeling the tarmac you know it's the suspension is sporty because of this olin's electronic suspension you've got you know, it stiffens the bike up. You've got the best of every possible scenario with this. And when I've tried these latest EC2 systems, they've been really good from like a, a comfort to sporty. The, the range of adjustment you've got on these new systems is amazing. Whereas the older Olin system wasn't quite as good from a comfort. It was sporty, but it didn't go comfortable enough. In a minute, I'll go to the comfortable setting and we'll see how comfortable it is because the RS was sporty. That wasn't the problem with that bike. It was certainly sporty enough. I didn't think too sporty for the road, but it was quite focused on being sporty. I could see why people did object to it, but this even in the... There is a slightly sportier setting because there's a track setting, but in the, the sport... Oh, front wheel coming up there. In the sport setting, it feels plush, it feels firm. I can feel the tarmac, but it still feels very, very plush. This gold stuff is good. This gold stuff is really good. Oh, that pull it's got. When you wind that throttle open, the amount of grunt it's got. Oh, they've done it sound good. Brakes, oh, the brakes are just absolutely incredible incredible stoppers on this <laughs> mid-range okay so the sporty setting gives you lots of feedback from the road you know you, you can feel the bumps from the road but it feels plush it doesn't feel crashy let's put it into a more comfortable no hang on that is the comfort mode actually i'm talking rubbish that was the comfort that was the road version that was actually the road version of the suspension, which is the comfortable one. So it's still sporty. It's not massively comfortable, I wouldn't say. It's still got a sporty feel to it. You can play around with you know, the settings of the comfort. So it could be that the comfort is could be tuned to be softer. I need to check that. But if that's the road setting, let's go to the uh, let's go to the sport setting. Right, that is the sport setting. Close the throttle. Go back. Okay, we're now in sport. Well, it's a nice sort of position to hang off of a little bit. 
got the uh, Pirelli Super Corsa tyres on, so a very sporty tyre. Yeah, you can move around on the bike. It's, when you've got drop bars like this, I, I find it much more rewarding when you are going quickly. You know, on a track day, this is will be much more rewarding than the RS version because. With the RS, I found it was just wheeling all the time because there was not much weight over the front of the bike. Whereas with you know with these drop bars, you've got more weight over the front, which gives you more feedback from the front wheel, and it enables to keep the front down a little bit, not wheeling all the time. But that, that's nice in the corners. That feels lovely. It just ah oh, really nice. It's 198 kilos wet. This so it's also nice and light. Let's give it a little bit of a tickle in first gear. Woo! God, it's fast. It is quick. You see it wheeling then? That was quite a big wheelie considering the wheelie controls on. That was a good 12 inches off the floor, that front wheel then, I'd say. I'm sure the traction's on. The traction's definitely on, it tell me. But that was letting, in the sport mode, it's letting the wheel come up quite a lot there and uh, yeah that's fun that is a lot of fun <laughs> i don't know if there's any adjustable i know you can turn uh, the traction off completely but you this is a little bit of a criticism i had with the rs and this is exactly the same on this the electronics are identical the wheelie control is built in with the traction control you can't separate it which means if you want to turn the wheelie control off and do a few wheelies have a bit of fun you've got to turn the traction off completely which is a little bit archaic when you see all the other new sports bikes you can separate them but okay it's a little gripe little gripe but the good news is in the sport mode it does let you do let the wheel come up and have a bit of fun but i don't think there's any way to adjust how much wheelie control you can let if the wheelie control is just on or off there's no adjustable wheelie control like on the tuono and you know bikes like that or any other of the sports bikes i think it's just uh, tied in with what mode you've got the bike in which is a little bit restrictive. I'd like to be able to separate wheelie control from traction control. On a modern bike, you know, a brand new bike to the market, you should really be able to do that. Right, let's just test a little bit of the pickup through the gears. So fourth gear, fourth gear, 30 miles an hour. Let's see what the pull's like. That's 60. See what I mean? That's the, that's the beauty of the, of the triple engine. You do that on a straight four, and it'll probably have taken twice as long as that. It's got a lot of pull, this bike. Past the corner, get out of the sea a little bit. Oh, it's lovely in the corners. Really stable feeling. Brakes, they're incredible. Incredible. When you're on the, on the brakes, and they feel a little bit sharp, but when you're actually on them and you're braking, from a higher speed, very control. You can really control how much power you're putting through them. They're not wooden at all, They're lovely. You know, a full Brembo setup is something to behold. <laughs> it's, it's really good. It wants to wheelie all the time. <laughs> it's really lively on the front end. I'm not sure if the gearing is the same as the RS version or whether it's geared slightly longer. I've got a feeling it's the same. I don't think it's been changed. That, that's, that's, that's how it feels. But it's got a... It's really responsive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lively. It's really exciting to ride. Really exciting to ride. I mean, it may be only 177 horsepower, which is a ridiculous thing to say, but it, it feels every bit of that 177 horsepower. It feels really lively, constantly pulling the wheel up. I think if you turn the traction control off and the wheelie control off, it would be absolute wheelie monster. It's, uh, it's got so much pull. It feels almost, it, it's not got as much absolute ridiculous initial power as like the RSV4 but it's it's still got a lot it's a really surprising amount of punch yeah that, that is very nice 
RS. I don't just feel like I've jumped on the RS with some low bars. It feels like a completely different bike. That, that change of body position, that change of front end, and the suspension, I guess, has transformed it. It feels like a whole new bike, this. Doesn't feel like an RS with some drop bars on. So we've ascertained that the sport mode is excellent. Let's try it in the sort of more comfortable roady mode. Let's go for the road mode. So this should be comfortable suspension now. Can I notice any difference? Not really. It's, the texture of the tarmac still feels the same. I'm going to pull over and just see how the suspension is set and see if you can adjust the suspension because it could be it's not been set up. Okay, let's just go into the menu a minute. I just want to see what we've got as far as suspension. So I'm going to go soft. Front firmness soft, rear firmness minus five, brake support. Well, I'll make it a bit softer. There we go, we're fully soft now. Let's accept that. And let's just go back to, let's go to the sport mode and see how it compares to the sport mode. See, sport is set to normal suspension. I would hope that the suspension is adjustable based on what mode you're in. I'm not sure you can change that then, which will be a shame. This is one criticism I have of the bike. I do find the Triumph electronics and the way they implement the electronics not as diverse <laughs> as other manufacturers. You can't tailor it as well as you can on a Ducati, as well as you can on the Aprilia, as well as you can on the BMW. It's just a little bit more restrictive to operate it within their parameters. So I, I want to be able to go to sport mode, go into the suspension on sport mode, and adjust how the suspension is while in sport mode. And then when I go into road mode, I want a different set of customizable suspension options. I don't want just the, the preset Triumph versions. I want to be able to go in and adjust it like that. So I'm, you know, I would have thought that would, would, it, would those settings I just customized would apply to a standard map. Doesn't seem like it. I mean, I've only got this bike for the day. I, can't, I haven't got the manual. I can't confirm that, but it looks like you're stuck with the factory settings, if you like, of how this is. And you can change it maybe globally, but I want to change it on a ma on a rider mode setting. Anyway, could be first little criticism. So there she is, the new Speed Triple 1200RR. Let's have a closer look. So starting at the front, we've got the Stylema calipers, braided lines, and also the Brembo RCS or MCS they call it master cylinder we've got some adjustment here between a 19 and a 21 inch capacity like piston size within here so not only can you adjust it for span you can also adjust it for capacity by twiddling this knob here so the brakes on this bike are absolutely fantastic I, I think it's one of the best braking systems on any bike I've ever ridden nice little feature with this bike is the amount of carbon fiber which has been used on it you've got a carbon front mudguard carbon trim underneath of the front cowl carbon trim around the radiator more carbon around the tank even a carbon fiber supporting bracket underneath the fairing the olin's adjustable beauties that lovely gold bling oh shit, shit. there's that front end a lot of people saying they don't like the look of it but i have to say I do really like the look of it. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's definitely a bike which looks better in the flesh than it does in pictures. This bike I've just noticed has a power bronze screen, so that's not the standard screen. Because I don't know if it's because it's darker, but yeah, that is a power bronze one. I love the two-tone finish on the paint, you know, with the grey here, the red. This red is just so luscious. I know Triumph get a lot of stick about the colours of their machines being a bit boring. But this red is just beautiful. They're quite small, the mirrors, or relatively small, but they do fold. You can fold the mirrors in and out for filtrage. The back of the bike is exactly the same as the RS. You know, you've got that same single-sided swinging arm, same exhaust system. I've seen some uh, really nice aftermarket exhausts on these. I think Pro Race do a nice one. Uh, Race Fit do quite a nice system for it as well. So, uh, you know, I'd love to hear one 
with the you know, non-standard exhaust on because the sound you get out of the airbox, combine that with a decent exhaust as well. Oh, sound absolutely lovely. There we go, there she is, the new Speed Triple RR. I have to say, I'm a big fan of that styling. Flipper. Oh, we've got low fuel alerts. That's a load of power, a load of power. The tyres are also lovely, super coarser tyres. Plenty of grip, plenty of, you can put power down, you can use the brakes. Fast. Oh, I love the feel of those brakes, so good. Plenty of brake support as well with that Olin's. So there we are, just a very, very quick look at this bike because I can't have it for long because as I say, this is Destination Triumph's demo and this bike's in high demand at the moment. What I'll be doing a bit later in the year, a couple of months time, I'll get my hands on the Triumph, the Triumph UK press bike and I'll have that for a couple of weeks and I can bring you more of an in-depth look at this machine. This is just a first ride, first impressions. I haven't been able to cover everything, but I can tell you straight away that it feels like a completely different prospect to the RS version. It feels very, very different. I mean, I'm quite surprised that, you know, some different suspension and a different bar position can make the bike feel so different. And maybe there are other changes with this machine it feels very very different from that does it feel like a full-on sports bike it doesn't it feels like a comfortable sports bike i wouldn't say in a halfway house between a naked and a sports bike it's more sports bike than that but it's not as extreme as the likes of the panagales or you know it's more like the s1000 rr i would say it's a bit more like my old K8 GSXR, you know, it's back to the days when sports bikes weren't too extreme. They weren't dedicated track machines. And this is what Triumph have done. They've made a sports bike for the road. And I think this will be excellent on track. Much faster on track than the RS version, which struggled a little bit with wheel lift, a little bit with clearance on the pegs as well. Pegs are a little bit higher on this, but again, not too much, still comfortable but you do have a little bit more weight on your wrists obviously than a naked but it's not too extreme i'd say it's perfect setup for what i'd want and i absolutely love this my only criticisms are the same criticisms i had with the rs version and that is around the electronics they're a little bit too restrictive for brand new machines all the other manufacturers or most of the other manufacturers you know, they're coming out with much more flexible electronics so that you adjust much more and customize you know much more than you can on this so that's a slight criticism would it stop me buying the bike probably not but it's 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 quite a big one i mean the whole these whole new machines are so much governed by their electronics these days that if they're not flexible it can really affect your enjoyment of them what I really love is just how much fun this bike is and it's yeah you know 177 horsepower some will say it's not enough need to be 200 it, <laughs> it really doesn't and that power delivery works really well with these bars it feels fast it feels faster than what I remember the the RS being it's a lot of fun this bike so if you're interested in this have a look at Destination Triumph. I'll put links below and so say this is their demo, so give them a ring. You may be able to get your ass on this exact bike and take it for a bit of a spin. But I've been, uh, yes, really rather impressed with this machine. But thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.